So good evening, everyone. I know pretty much everybody in the room knows this, but I'm going to do what I will be asking you to do all week, which is make sure you introduce yourselves. So I am Gordon Rankin. As you all know, I'm the conference minister for the New Hampshire Conference, and I am a member at First Parish in Dover. Uh, and I want to welcome you to this, our third connecting session of our 2024 annual meeting season. Tonight, we'll be focusing on uh, the resolution that is being presented to the uh, annual meeting, which is on gun violence prevention. Uh, I will let us unfold the full name of the resolution a little later on. But uh, a few pieces of um, Zoom etiquette protocols, whatever you want to say, just to remind you of. Uh, first is if you are not speaking or asking a question, we would encourage you to mute yourself. That helps uh, keep there from being background noise, which distracts from the speakers at that time. Uh, and it seems like you've all already stepped into that uh, way of doing things. So we're very appreciative of that. Um, I would remind you, as you heard just a moment or two ago, that we do record these um, sessions. These sessions then get posted on our YouTube channel. This will be posted before I leave this evening. Um, so just be thoughtful while we want you to get to ask your questions and stuff like that. Um, we want you to just remember that it's being recorded, not saying anything that you don't want out there for the entire world to hear, such as this is not a good place to share your Netflix password. So. Uh, and finally, to remind you that this evening is a annual meeting connecting event. Um, so it is pursuant to the standing rules for our annual meeting, which means um, when you go to speak, or at least for the first time this evening, please introduce yourself by name and uh, the church community that you are a part of. Um, when we come to the end of the evening, I will say a few more things about our remaining co connecting sessions and annual meeting. But for now, I am going to turn you over to our Peace with Justice Advocates group that is going to tell you a bit about this resolution and then engage your questions. And uh, first up to speak is Janet Zeller. Thank you, Gordon. And as Gordon said, I am Janet Zeller and I'm a member of South Church in Concord. Uh, welcome to this connecting session. The long name is a resolution a lamentation and call to congregations for discussion and action about gun violence prevention. This is the resolution that's coming forth on Saturday. It was developed by the Peace with Justice Advocates Mission Group of the conference. Your three presenters tonight are all members of the New Hampshire Conference of Peace with Justice Advocates. Um, in addition to me presenting, also will be the Reverend John Buttrick and the Reverend Faye Buttrick. So here's an overview of the session. This is what we're going to cover. We'll begin with an opening litany, a lamentation, a cry for peace by the Reverend John Buttrick. Mm -hmm. Lamentation is intended for use as a litany by congregations. It's available in the resource guide, and we'll talk about that later in this session. Then the Reverend Faye Buttrick will share the background of the resolution's development, followed by a review of the resolution. She'll highlight the two Be It Resolved sections of the resolutions that will be voted on at the annual meeting. Next, I'll introduce the 56 pages of resources to support churches implementing the resolution. We'll leave lots of time for your questions and comments. I'll also moderate that Q&A. So with that said, we'll do a little dancing here and ask John to get started. Hear a cry of peace, a lament. We sing your steadfast love, O God, forever. Your justice surges like an ever-flowing stream. How long, O God, will you deny us the river of the water of life? How long will you let your people suffer the swords, spears, and weapons of domination? How long will you allow guns 
to imitate the path to peace. There are more guns than people in our nation. How long, O oh God, before you come to the valley of the shadow of death? Freedom to bear arms is sacrosanct in our country. How long, O oh God, will you withhold the true foundation of our being? There are annually more than 40,000 gun-related deaths in our nation. 2,500 are children and teens. How long, O oh God, must we suffer the grief of death by gun? 54% of gun deaths were suicide. 43 were murders. How long, O oh God, will you let your murder and suicide infect your creation? There were more than 630 mass shootings in 2023. How long, O oh God, must daily sorrow burden our hearts? 91% of people favor stricter gun laws, yet 25 states allow firearms without permit. How long, O oh God, before you listen to your people? New Hampshire legislators may carry guns on the floor of the assembly. How long, O oh God, will you let belligerence and fear reign over us? Most firearm deaths are from handguns. How long, O oh God, how long? Look on us and answer our sovereign God. Give light to our eyes or we will sleep in death. Take not your waters of justice from us that we may drink in your love and peace for all creation. Do not withhold your shield of love from us. We sing of your wisdom, power, and grace. Come, be our refuge and our source of peace. Thank you, John. Faye? I'm Faye Buttrick uh, and a member of South Church here in Concord. The Peace with Justice Action Mission Group sponsored a workshop titled Gun Violence Prevention and the Church at this year's February Prepared to Serve. Out of that wide ranging conversation that represented nine different churches came first one person and then another joining in, saying they would like to be part of such a healthy discussion in their church. This resolution has been written with that purpose in mind. The resolution is online with its own direct link, and you'll find that in the chat. I want to just run briefly through the resolution, which follows the New Hampshire Conference guidelines. The resolution opens with a summary statement. And let me read from that. This resolution calls on congregations of the conference to engage in awareness, discussions, and study about gun violence for the purpose of taking actions toward preventing that violence, both individually and as an organization. The background that comes next lists a few of the many available statistics on gun violence in the United States. And then we move on to the rationale for the resolution. The church has a mandate to be an active and vocal witness and guide in our communities, but so far has been largely silent on the topic of guns, both in our churches and in the wider society. Further, we are guided by words from the prophets and from Jesus. For example, Isaiah calls upon the people to turn their swords into plowshares and their swords into pruning hooks. And in Matthew, we are called upon to be peacemakers, to promote nonviolent, to live in peace with ourselves, our neighbors, and with the wider community. The resolution calls for a serious look at what the scripture says to us about violence and about relationships. 
And now comes the therefore be it resolved section. There are two asks. This section is the portion that delegates will actually vote on at the okay. annual meeting. Getting ahead of myself here, sorry. The first one is a therefore be it resolved that we shall be silent no more. We shall cry out to the God of peace and justice to save us from gun violence. The churches of the conference mourn with the countless communities and families that have suffered terrible losses every year due to gun violence. And then the second ask, be it further resolved that the 223rd annual meeting of the New Hampshire Conference of the United Church of Christ call upon the churches of the conference to become informed, discuss and be active regarding the misuse of guns in our communities and the prevention of gun violence as consistent with our faith and practice as Christians. The resolution calls us to study and to talk together within our churches and then to engage with the wider community on the implications of gun violence. And that ends the resolution. Thank you, Kay. Kay, I saw you, Kay. I'm changing your name. Okay, let's move on to the resources. Um, the resources are 56 pages long. I hope you've had a chance to browse through them or even have already downloaded them from the website for the annual meeting. They will also permanently be at the website that is on the bottom of this screen. If you wanna jot that one down, it is also in the chat. This, um, oh, just a minute. I've got too many things on my desk here. The 56 pages of for implementing the gun violence prevention resolution is downloadable. As I said, it's currently on the conference and after that it will be on this other website. Both links are in the chat. The resources include the Cry for Peace Lamentation Litany John shared earlier, as well as an implementation plan for the awareness, discussion, and action called for by the resolution. In addition, the resources include a detailed six-session group discussion guide for your church groups. In addition, there are 150 links to further information on gun violence prevention. Those links include a large number of resources on church security, safe spaces preparedness, and the details of the security grant program that is competitive in New Hampshire. That grant provides up to $150,000 for safe spaces improvements, training, et cetera, for any one facility each year. Resources, the resources guide also has information about the New Hampshire Guns to Gardens program. That provides an opportunity for individuals to remove unwanted firearms from their home and keep them off the market. Those weapons are transformed into garden tools and other useful items. The final chapter of the resources guide is pastoral resources. It contains links to pastoral emergency response resources for times of gun violence. With that overview and the, of the resolution and the resources, stop sharing. Let's hear from all of you. If you have a question or a comment, please raise your hand. You can either use the raise hand emoji in the react section or raise your own hand. Since everyone's on one screen, it'll be easy to see you. And then please remember to unmute when you're called on. Let's hear some questions or comments. Yes. 
Hi, Hi. my name is Tracy May Calvitis. I serve in Dublin and Harrisville. Um, I just want to say I'm so impressed with the resources that you've gathered together. And I wonder how that, um, I'm just curious how that came about. Like how has your group worked to gather all those um, all those resources? It's really impressive. Well, as it shares within the inside cover of the um, of the uh, resources, and let me read it to you. Um, we want to acknowledge the Presbyterian Peace Fellowship Gun Violence Prevention Project. We've worked with them a lot. They are very generous with their um, sharing of their resources they have developed over the years. And they share them, no copyright. They say, use them, use them, use them any way you can. In addition to that, the uh, National Office of the UCC provides additional links. And we talked a lot with Don Bliss, who's a security assessment specialist. And he gave us lots of information and the information about the safe spaces. And we've also been beating the bushes for other connections. Nancy Brown with the New Hampshire Guns to Gardens has worked closely with us and we partner with Guns to Gardens, New Hampshire, uh, the Peace with Justice Advocates do. Um, Xander Rice Hawkins from Granite State Organizing Project will be at the annual meeting in Nancy's place at a Guns to Gardens table to give you a lot more information about that. Um, Faye John and I will be at the Peace with Justice Advocates table, and Becky Field, who many of you may know, will be there with the Finding Home table. And Becky's also part of the Peace with Justice Advocates. So we'll all be there and we'll be all together, so we'll be glad to share more with you then. And I do hope Thank you'll you. utilize the resources and 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 get discussing in your church. It's really important to have that conversation. Thank you, Tracy Lee. Yes, you've you've made it easy to do that. Thank you. Other comments, questions? This is gonna be a short connecting session. Nothing else from anyone. Wow, Faye and John and I were gonna share off on the different questions, so. Okay. I would just urge everyone to vote <laughs> in favor of the resolution, since we have time to, to pitch for that. Um, Gordon, and, do you want to say anything about that voting process? Faye is going to be speaking on behalf of the resolution in her two-minute piece. But how's it going to work? Uh, so the voting process will be, uh, Faye will be making the motion. This is a, has, is a recommended resolution coming from the Board of Directors. It will not need a second. Um, we will go into our time of deliberation. Um, that time of deliberation will begin with Faye as the person who's made the motion being the first to speak to it. Um, and then we will alternate between people speaking uh, for the motion or against the motion. Um, obviously, um, uh, um, amendments can be made to the motion during that process. Uh, and then, I mean, you guys kind of know how this goes. You would act on the amendment and then we'd go back and vote on the full motion. Uh, I would remind you the only parts um, based on our standing rules of a resolution that we vote on are the therefore be it resolved sections, which is why those are what Janet put up on our screen. Uh, and you will be able to vote if you are there in person um, and you're a delegate, a voting delegate um, to the meeting. And uh, if you are in our Zoom meeting and are a voting delegate, you'll also be able to vote that way. Okay. Um, so it works for everybody. And we'll put those two totals together um, all it takes is a simple majority to pass a resolution. So if you'd like to be one of the people who volunteer to speak on behalf of it, if you're on behalf of it, that would be very helpful. That too. 
Well, there are two microphones, aren't there? And they three microphones, to... one pro, one con, one for items of order. It doesn't look like we have any other comments. Really, folks? Okay. I will have to say oh, when. David, oh. are you commenting or are you? Yeah, I just was wondering, Janet and Faye and John, if you could tell us how this resolution compares to others in other conferences across the denomination. Have you seen anything else like it? Is it, no. is it unique? Is it that, that kind of thing? Uh, Gordon sent me over to Maine conference to ask them following the terrible shooting in Lewiston at the conference taken some action. And they said that they had uh, gathered up their forces to work with their legislature, but they had not done anything for a conference ride resolution to um, have the individual churches move forward within their own church for the discussion. We've not found one doing quite this. And were it not for the prepared to serve session, as they explained, um, I don't know that this is the, the route we were going to take. It just became very clear that churches need to start with this discussion because, wow, was that a wide-ranging 75-minute conversation. Wouldn't you say, Faye, John? No, yeah, exactly. And it certainly turned our thinking in a, a different direction. There's a need. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for all your interest in joining us this night. Yes, we appreciated it. Appreciated the 25 minutes together. <laughs> Gordon, is there any suggestion you have for anything else we might want to cover? Well, I was just going to own up to the fact then when Faye said to uh, vote, I thought she was speaking of um, election voting and not resolution voting. We want uh, that too. And uh, given just... we will take the model from our friends in Maine that um, our actual election voting also has impact on this issue to encourage everybody um, to uh, put your faith into action in your voting uh, as we come up to this election season. Thank you. That's an important point. That's a connection. Yeah. That is a connection. I was going to pass that. And we will give one more round for any last questions. And if not, I oh, go ahead, please. Um, it's not a question. It's just an appreciation. I'm literally this week. Uh, I just literally, just literally came from a house, house where, where uh, the uh, father, father committed suicide by gun. And we've had one gun suicide each week the last several weeks up oh. here so um you know it's clearly a conversation we need to have and i looking through the materials you have provided a range of entry points for people to begin the conversation um so just appreciation for the materials that you've put together which will certainly be helpful for um future initiatives that our community might take. Thank you. And I, I would really encourage all of you to take a look at those, that six uh, session discussion guide. It is detailed and deep and it, it takes a pledge of, of constancy with each other in the group that people can be open with each other and know they're in a safe space to speak. And uh, it's just an important piece for a, a church to work through. And I think is it's very enabling. We printed the entirety in the resource guide rather than just send you to a link because we think once you start to read through some of those sessions, you're gonna think we could do this. And that's what we want you to do. Hey, John, anything else? Yeah, I, I, I could say uh, what my motivation is. Um, J Janet, is the, is the poster in the resource packet? It's the uh, last page. The last page. What I was really, what I'm working toward 
And what this resolution, I hope, you see that? Lord, is no firearms of sanction in this uh, sanctuary and church building to be posted on our churches. And there's more to it. What's that? And there's more to it. I know, but I can't see it. Okay, yeah. I'll read that part. Oh, oh, following Jesus' command, put away your sword. Jesus also said, do not be afraid, for I am with you. Because what, one of the things that it makes people nervous sometimes to think, that, to announce that there are no guns in the, in the uh, building. But that's my goal. That's what I want to happen. It's there as it says this sign may be used. We know of some other possible signs. So if churches get to that point, I will make sure we'll make sure to add that link. The other thing is if you run across a link that isn't in here that you think we should add, please send it to me. My um, email address is on the front, and we consider this a living document. We want to keep adding to it. So share what you find. I think that really is everything we have. Well, thank you, friends, for being with us this evening. I would like to just remind you of our remaining connecting sessions. We have one more pre-annual meeting connecting session on Thursday when we will be introducing you to our uh, newest ministry initiative known as Ministry 21. I'm not going to tell you all about it tonight. That you got to come on Thursday to be, you know, learn about. So uh, you will hear a bit more about it at the annual meeting actually itself. And Ministry 21 will be the recipient of our annual meeting offering this year. Uh, and then is our tradition post the annual meeting. Uh, we have two um, opportunities uh, to have conversations with Sarah and myself. Those will be on Sunday at four o'clock and next Tuesday at seven o'clock. And those you get to set the agenda for. Um, we'll say, what do you want to talk about? And we will talk about those things. So um, uh, please feel free to join us for any of those. And then just want to um, uh, not remind, that's not the right word, but just uh, reflect on the fact that we will be gathering together for the annual meeting uh, this Saturday, either uh, in person at Geneva Point or uh, via Zoom if you're a delegate or on YouTube if you are a visitor. Uh, we look forward to having everyone together. One little um, word of information to share with you all, and uh, I think this actually went out in an email today. If not, it's going out in the morning, um, is uh, to let you know that uh, the meeting space where we're actually meeting together is a heated building. However, two of the other spaces that we're utilizing, the barn where probably many of us will eat lunch and the chapel where we will do check-in and where our exhibitors are, are unheated buildings. Ooh. Um, it is um, only supposed to be in the high 50s come Saturday um, at the heart of the day. So we're encouraging you to bring a couple of layers um, because they may be welcome things to have with you while you are with us for the annual meeting. Um, so, I have, a, I have a question for you, Gordon. Yes. Where are the exhibit tables? Uh, the exhibit tables are in that chapel space. Check in and, and the exhibit tables. Oh, are the all unheated space. In the unheated space, yes. Okay. Um, so, yes, particularly those of you who are hanging out in there for a, a while, you're going to want to have some layers. Um, or yes. if you have a youth coming to our day at camp where you'll be outside a lot of the day, that's another good set of people to have some extra layers. Okay. Um, so uh, want to give ample warning before you arrive so you can consider that. Thank you. We appreciate that. Very, very good. And with that, unless anybody has questions about the connecting sessions or annual meeting, um, we will bid you a good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you all.